Uh, welcome to the Condo Insider Show. I'm your host today, Cheryl Franklin. And today we're going to be talking about the subject of the benefits and the challenges of short-term versus long-term rental properties. Uh, many of our homeowners and viewers are thinking about becoming um, rental homeowners, and there's a lot to consider in that. So we have one of my favorite guests again, Krista Stadler, <laughs> broker in charge, <laughs> Essential Hawaii Rental and Sales Division. I don't know why I always have a challenge with that, but... Um, Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much for How having me back. How are you doing? Back. Good. I'm doing well. Good. Yes. Having fun. This is a subject right up my alley. Oh, of course. You're yes. the expert. Well, I don't know about that, but it, I've, I've been there and done this. So, yeah. yeah it's very yeah. familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're, you're the expert. I'm not. <laughs> I'm endeavoring to be. <laughs> so let's just jump right in because I know there's a lot to consider. And right out the, the gate, you need to consider whether or not you want to do short term or long term. And even if you should or shouldn't hire a uh, property manager, because I know there are some um, rental owners that think they could do it themselves. But, you know, we always kind of and, and, advise and some against do, that. And some do very well at it. Um, but it's, it's a real commitment. And it's challenging if you're not in the same town or on the same island that you own your property. Mm -hmm. um, that could be a real challenge. But So there's going to be a lot of information to cover, but I basically want to kind of set a stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to, for the purposes of what we're going to talk about today, we're going to assume that the owner has purchased the property cash. Maybe they're nearing retirement, maybe want to retire in five years, but they want a little piece of paradise now. And they're trying to decide if they want to um, rent that property, in, that investment for now, and it's going to be their property eventually. If they want to rent it as a long-term rental or a short-term rental, so I've had, I've been in the situation where I've been help, helped people make this decision many times. There's a lot of things that they may not consider or have considered when they're going into it. So, mm -hmm. um, again, since we're doing condo insider, we're going to assume it's a condo. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so lots of pros and cons on both sides, and in, in, in terms of whether you want to do a vacation rental or a long term rental. But why don't we just start with the short term? Okay. And talk about some of the benefits of a um, of going down that road in terms of short term or vacation rentals. If Correct. You will. Correct. Yeah. So, if you are an owner that plans to use your property three or four months a year, especially if you're not planning to do, use it consecutively for those three or four months. You want to come in January, and then you want to come back in April, and then maybe you want to come in August. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do a long-term rental. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. decision is going to be made for you uh, right there. Mm -hmm. um, if you have options, if maybe you only want to come for winter, which when I owned my company in Kona, we had um, many situations where folks would just want to live in their property January, February, March, and then we would rent it for them, in some cases vacation rental, but more challenging because mm. not high season. And in other oh. cases, we would rent it for the remaining months of the year until they returned. Snowbirds, um, if you will. They would be kind snowbirds. Of. The owners would be considered snowbirds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that would be kind of some of the choices and things that they would be thinking about. You also want to be thinking about um, the property that you're purchasing. Is it completely furnished, beautiful, upgraded, and has it been a vacation rental in the past? That's easier to move into uh, transforming it into a vacation rental. And we're going to get into some legislative things that are happening that are also putting restrictions, but we'll talk about that yeah, in a minute. Yeah, especially here. Yeah, here yeah. in all the islands, but they're different. Mm -hmm. um, if the property, if the condo is in need of uh, refurbishing, it's completely unfurnished, and the owners are thinking, well, before we move in, but maybe not before we rent it, we want to do some renovations then for them, it might be best to rent it as an unfurnished long-term long -term. rental because the cost of refurbishing it to what they're going to ultimately want or what they're going to need to do to make it a desirable vacation rental and also furnish it and fully equip it with every you know, kitchen item and accessory televisions, you know, all the different things that they're going to need is going to be another quite investment. expensive. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And they may not even want that furniture that they're purchasing in the five years. They may have 
they may be bringing their own furniture over. Yeah, so, long term is typically six months. Yes, so in the so it's kind of interesting. In the state of Hawaii, a residential long term lease is 180 days or longer. Hmm. Um, however, a, in the vacation rental world, so anything less than 180 days, you have to pay a transient accommodation tax. The guest typically, we call them a guest when it's a vacation rental, and we call them a tenant when it's a long term rental. The guest would typically pay that 10.25% plus the general excise tax, you collect it and then pass it on to the state. Um, so. Ah, the guests would pay that. Well, yeah. Yeah. You, you, would, you, would, want, want, yeah. you would want to, to do that. You could gross it up, but it typically when you're marketing it, you want it to just be the rental rate, right? So, um, oh my gosh, I'm completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, let's talk about Start the, talking about the taxes. Yeah, well, that, that lends itself to earning potential, like let's maybe talk about that a little bit because I, I think initially uh, until you've either rented your unit multiple times, you're not going to exactly have it filled like what, 50% yes, of the time? Yes, this is a, you this is a very things good. you have to consider, yeah? Yeah, so I always look at a vacation rental as a, and I know where I was on that last one, we'll go back to that. Okay. I always look at a vacation rental as a small business. They're, so completely different. The long-term rental and vacation rental are so completely different. The expectation of somebody coming in on, for a vacation is, is similar to going to a hotel. Um, and I know you've and shared stories not with me. The case, yeah. yeah the, and if their air conditioning goes out or the refrigerator stops working, whatever it might be, you need to take action. Or you would want to take action immediately, have vendors on the ready to come in. I mean, they, they, they want to fix like an hour. They're not yeah. going to wait till Monday morning if it's a Friday afternoon for it yeah. to be repaired. Um, or if they're like me, they complain and then just never come back again. <laughs> yeah, or write a bad review. Or write a bad review. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so as far as earning potential goes, I typically would say to clients, Maybe the first year, 40%. Mm. Probably going to get high season, and, and, and I always like to under-promise and over-deliver, so 40%. As that property gets reviews and moves up in the SEO, and as um, you have more bookings, all these different things, how quickly you respond to the inquiries, all these things push it, push it up higher in the search engine. Um, people going back to Minnesota or wherever they're visiting from and telling their friends, oh my gosh, this was such a great place. You and Susie should book it for your next trip. Mm -hmm. All those things are going to propel it to, and those folks rebooking, repeat mm -hmm. guests. Oh, you love repeat guests. That'll just every year, year over year over year, you should be seeing pretty good increases. But really not until you're in the third year are you going to see probably close to what the max potential is going to be. Yeah. Um, if you're lucky... If you're lucky over that time, I'll use myself for example. Yes. My husband and I went to Las Vegas. We rented a home. It was beautiful at that time. We went back five years later, decided to rent the same house, invite our family again, and it was not the same. So it was apparent that they hadn't maintained it properly, mm -hmm. but the pictures are still the same. As, on the, as before, right. as before. So I don't know if there's any way around that, but well, it's just uh, keeping up with things. I mean, yeah. the nice thing about one of the benefits of a short-term rental is it's constantly, you're constantly having it cleaned mm -hmm. and inspected. Mm -hmm. And hopefully if repairs would be noted mm -hmm. or any kind of damage, obviously, um, and dealt with immediately. Whereas with a long-term rental, you could have people in there for five years. I mean, hopefully you're still having inspections, but those probably would only be happening annually, unless they're living there. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 people on vacation are out and about yeah. a large majority of the time. And well, have, I, yeah, I think that's one of the benefits of, of hiring a property management company, because they're going to ensure those things don't happen. They, and my husband, in our situation, the owner, it was a private deal kind yeah. of thing. So I don't think he was as meticulous as a property management company would be in encouraging you to, like, hey, that coffee pot is really old or, you know what I mean? And just kind yeah. of maintaining the place a little more. 
You really need to come into it and look at the property. You want it clean. Mm -hmm. Cleanliness is, key. you know, key. Yeah, because you know we're not. Going you don't back. want your sheets stained, and you want you know, very uh, nice pillow protectors and mattress mm -hmm. protectors that are waterproof and bed bug resistant. And um, you you want you want it to almost feel luxurious. Mm -hmm. As luxury, even on a budget, you can do that with nice bedding and nice towels and and you know, the decor. You can really do a lot, even for a one bedroom or a studio. You can still make it like a little piece of paradise for the folks that are coming into it. Mm -hmm. um, but cleanliness is is huge, and typically with a property management company, you would want the cleaner to be coming in and then it to be inspected again by the property management company, which is different than the cleaner. Make sure to make sure broken, that or, they didn't yeah. miss the coffee grounds in the coffee pot or you right. open the microwave, make sure they didn't miss wiping that out. You know, just mm -hmm. double checking everything because you can always call them back if you find something like that. Um, maintenance, though, because you kind of talked about that. Maintenance and reviews are so closely tied. Um, reviews are so important. Not not having a bad, a negative review, a bad review. And communication with the guest is very important if they have a concern wanting to immediately respond to them you can take something that was maybe seems negative at the beginning and turn it into an opportunity to shine depending on how you handle it um, but if they leave and a coffee a coffee cups broken a wine glass is broken and you turn around and charge them twelve dollars for that that twelve dollars if you charge them for it and they decide that even though they may have had the Greatest trip, everything was wonderful, but that's just going to set off a nerve, yeah. and they're going to they're going to leave a three or four star review rather than it's a not five worth star. It, it yeah. is not worth it. Just replace just it. Just replace the coffee cup, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's kind of important. Um, I would think one of the benefits of short term or vacation is the flexibility. Yeah, you can just kind of. Um, schedule your own time. I'm going to be there in the spring. I can rent it out in the winter. You Absolutely. have a lot more flexibility. Definitely. If you own it free and clear, like we were, we were saying, and you aren't in a position where you need to have that income, and you're just maybe trying to get some additional income while it's sitting vacant. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's 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 empty for a couple of weeks, and you want to fly over or have your friends or family fly over. You just call the property management company or go in yourself if you're managing it yourself. Block off the calendar. So yeah, definitely a, a lot more flexibility. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, there are challenges, especially on Oahu, right? There's a lot of red tape and things all, going all on. All the islands. Kind of... And I'm definitely not the expert in this area. I know yeah. you've had other speakers in the past, but um, the big island, island of Hawaii, Maui, um, I'm not sure about Kauai, but most likely. And also here in Oahu, there are strict regulations that are going into effect if they haven't already they're each a little bit different each island's a little bit different and um, it's primarily targeting rentals of less than 30 days and it's also requiring I believe in all all of the all three of those islands it's requiring them to register so there's a registration fee and they've got to show proof that they've been operating as a vacation rental they've got to, they've got to provide proof that they've been paying their transient accommodation taxes. It's a lot more regulated. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm a little bit more familiar with what's happening in Kona since I just came from there, but I'm not exactly sure here in Oahu, but my understanding is once they register here, I believe they only have a certain number that they're accepting. You can turn around. If you keep it as a vacation rental and you sell it and they maintain it as a vacation rental, it'll keep it going. Mm -hmm. But if you stop and then live in it, and then try to re-rent it as a vacation rental? No deal. All done. right, that's a good place for a break. So we're going to take a quick break. Please come back and join us after the break. Thank you. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Munley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, 
Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're just going to jump right back in and continue our talk on uh, long-term versus short-term rentals, the pros and cons of both. Uh, first half of the show, we talked about the benefits of short-term or vacation rentals. And at this moment, we're just going to segue into long-term rental. And let's start with the benefits of long-term versus the okay. vacation rentals. Okay. So if having consistent income is something that you're wanting, you're not wanting a month or six weeks with it being empty, um, that's one thing to consider with the long-term rentals. Also, the commission consistent rate. Consistent income. Consistent yeah. income, yes. Um, so you'll also want to consider the commission rate that's being charged. Typically, mm. a long-term rental is much less of a commission rate than a than percentage a than a vacation rental, a long-term rental. The, 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 excuse me, the vacation rental, the short-term rental. I didn't know that. It's oh, yes. It's not the same. I mean, it's probably more than double. I would, yeah, maybe oh. three times, and I've seen in some cases four times what a typical long-term commission rate is. But the amount of work required and amount of communication with the guest and the turns and dealing with cleaners. I mean, on the on the on the short term rental side is it's like, like I said it's before, a lot of it's work. a yeah. lot of work. It's like running a hotel. Yeah. So there's a reason for the commission being higher. That makes sense. And yeah. then on the um, short term, the utilities are paid by the owner, right? They're not. Yes, that's a really good point. So yeah. on the short term rental, whether your property is occupied or not, you're still paying electric, you're paying um, all of the utilities, the cable, the internet, whereas on a long-term rental, we recommend, or I recommend, that other than maybe water and trash and the things that are included in your uh, association dues would be put in the tenant's name. Highly recommend that the, especially the electricity and cable, internet, unless it's included again in the association. So you've got that expense, you've got a, less, a lower commission, you've got less uh, you know, lower amount of bills that you're paying. So you really kind of have to net it out. If you figure you, you're going to, on average, rent your property as a short-term rental two weeks a month, and that's, that's a pretty, that'd be 50% of the wow. year. And you take that gross, and then you subtract out the higher commission, and you subtract out the bills that you're going to have to be paying to keep it constantly operating, then you, you're going to look, you're going to want to net out what you're really going to get when all is said and done. Sounds complicated. Long term seems property a lot cleaner. A property manager can help you sit down and, and evaluate yeah. some of those things. Yeah, yes. they would have to. Yeah, in my yeah. case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and so so less turnover. Um, there is less turnover, which could be good or bad. Less turnover from a financial standpoint is great. Less turnover from going in and going into the property and inspecting, like we discussed before, maybe mm -hmm. a, perceived as a negative. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always a demand for long-term rentals. So where short-term rental, you may Could have a demand seasonal it's seasonally or, or based on you know Thanksgiving, Christmas, different, event, different events in the area, like in Kona, it's Ironman. I'm sure there's many events here as well. Um, with long-term rental, everyone, you know, they're always in demand. Yeah, yeah. Especially here in Oahu. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's nice to purchase property here, and I know folks that have done that, have done this, purchase a property here as an investment for retirement. So then they just rent it out long term. Absolutely. And then when it's time to retire, you know, they just don't renew the lease, obviously, right? right. And they're ready to retire in paradise. Uh, so that, very, that's very, very common. Very common, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. common. I mean, there yeah. are true just investors. They're never going to live in it. They're just purchasing to have the income. Um, but I, I have found, especially with, well, with both, with vacation rental and long-term rental, that, that that's the plan. Another one is 1031. They'll do a 1031 exchange. They have to rent it for two years before they can live in it. So oh, yeah. we would know yeah. as the property management company, this is only going to be our baby for two years. But that's yeah. okay. You yeah. know, that's yeah, what we're yeah. here for. So that's fine. Yeah. 
Um, we talked about the vacancy periods are lower. Mm -hmm. um, Always a demand. I like that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the other thing that would be something you'd want to consider with long-term rentals is there are so many more regulations and laws related to the handling of having a long-term tenant where the typical vacation renter, Saturday morning, you know, mm -hmm. hey, honey, let's book a trip. You know, they get all there. They look at all the different sites that they can look at and over their coffee. They book it. They get a confirmation. They get communication from the company or the owner, the lockbox code, however they're going to access it. Like a hotel. Yeah, they come, they I go. Know. Typically, don't even, they don't even meet or greet anyone. Oh, that's true. Yeah, where the, a, a tenant is a whole different ball game. We discussed this last week, so I don't want mm -hmm. to go totally repeat myself, but for mm -hmm. those that didn't watch, you know, you've got the screening and you've got the, you want to have a very thorough rental agreement and you want to understand the laws um, related to having a tenant. You want to have your insurance in both cases, your property insurance. You want to make sure that they're aware that it's, you're either going to be renting it as a vacation rental or a long-term rental. I'm not sure if there's a difference in an increase cost, but maybe we'll ask a future guest about that. All right. That would be interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So but tell me, have you stayed in in any other rentals, vacation, vacation rentals, rentals that you've had yes, experience with? I have. Um I had an experience maybe about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had friends that were getting married here. They didn't tell me. They just kind of ran away and eloped and called me and said, we're getting married on the North Shore. Come over and spend the weekend yeah. with us. So the only reference they had was a really pretty brochure. And what we discovered was the brochure was very pretty, but the unit was very old and dated. Wicker furniture. It was just... And it was right on the ocean that you would think would be a good thing, but it was also right against the rocks. So all I heard was the waves against crashing, the, crashing, crashing all night. So it didn't get much sleep. But it was just interesting because I know when she rented the unit, if you don't like live here like we do, and we kind of know all the locations and yeah. spots like that, you can really... You know, you can really get um, disillusioned between the difference between the brochure and what's online opposed to. Now, I'm not sure if she did that through this, some kind of online website, mm -hmm. obviously, because I would think a property management company, you know, would you can, handle things a little differently. You, you, you can still go onto the website of a property management company and, and book it's still, direct. I mean, depending on how sophisticated oh, yeah. their system is. You, you can. But I would think a property management company is a little more concerned about their inventory and reputation. So they I would, would hope make, so. So, make sure that that property doesn't have any termites. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and yeah. things like that. So it yeah. was not a good experience. And since then, they've kind of torn the place down. So oh, okay. that was mm -hmm. really weird. Wow. Really weird. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, boy, I'm sorry you had that experience. Yeah. yeah, that's why reviews are so important, and so many people look at reviews. Now. I do. I look at reviews for everything. Yeah, me too. Everything, everything I do, I'm always, it drives my husband nuts. He's very simple. He sees it. He wants to go there, and I'm like, wait a minute. I have to analyze and see what the reviews are saying. So, you know, no. it's a nice balance. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, and then, you know, with long term, like you said, there's increased wear and tear. Like if you have a tenant in there like for five years, which is good, yeah, if you have a long-term tenant, the chances are when they move out, you're going to have to replace things. Yes, yeah. yes. You're, you're probably going to have to paint. Mm -hmm. um, carpet depends on the grade of the carpet when they, when, when they moved in and how long it had been there prior mm -hmm. to them moving in. But mm -hmm. you're going to want to refresh it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, are you losing your earpiece? I am losing my earpiece. It's okay. I, got, I have weird ears. So we'll figure that out next time. It's okay. We're just going to wing it. It's We're going right. to wing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have had situations also where I've started out with a, an owner thinking we're going to go one direction and then it turns into, it turns into another direction. And I have a success story. One of the most successful ones in Kona that I managed, they wanted to rent it out long term, but the garage was not um, 
accessible, which is huge. So here's this mm. big, beautiful two-car garage, but the people coming to look at it couldn't access it. Because they were using it for storage? They were using it for their vehicles and for storage. Oh. And so it had a pool, and it had a great ocean view. Um, it had two huge master bedrooms and then, like, a loft area upstairs. But it wasn't a closed-off bedroom. Mm -hmm. So we were having a challenge renting it as a long-term rental. And the owners were thinking that's the way they wanted to go. And so I, finally I said, you know, what do you think about trying to do it as a vacation rental? Because it's, got, it's hitting all the, 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 the marks the here. Marks, yeah. And vacation renters don't care about a garage. They care about a pool, an ocean view, a nice lanai and deck. And then that loft area, you could end up putting another four to six people. It was a huge loft area yeah. you know, with bunk yeah. beds and hold out beds and then two master suites for the adults with their own bathrooms. It's perfect vacation rental. It's that vacation rental now, other than when the owners come, is, I mean, I would venture to say it's booked like 90% of the time. Oh, wow. So Yeah, that would be you important, can, You can take though. a turn. Yeah. If, if the company handles both long-term and vacation rental, you can take a turn. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that mm -hmm. would be a big deal for a long-term um, tenant not to have access to the garage and things like that. So that was great yeah, advice it, for them. Yeah, it was interesting. And they wanted folks wanting a home that size typically wanted to have the third bedroom completely closed mm -hmm. off, which mm -hmm. I, I understand that. On vacation, it's different. Yeah. But to live in it, you know, 365 days a year, you want to have a nice closed off room rather than this big open loft area. Yeah. So yeah. totally understandable. But another challenge with long term is understanding those landlord tenant codes which many do not, and that's another benefit of just taking the route of hiring a property management company because it's your job to kind of understand these codes and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're there for, keep them out of, keep them out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just the words you say can be something that's going to get you in trouble, and you may not even realize it as, a, as an owner or a layman that doesn't understand This day and age, pretty much everything <laughs> That's kind of the deal. That's kind of the deal. So yeah. any other exciting stories that you can well, share? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, the other thing I was just going to say is, you know, you really are going to want to rely again on your property management company as your partner to help yeah. you through these times and making these decisions and making these turns if and when you need to and mm -hmm. um, helping you with pricing all those things so just you know really utilize them and if you don't feel you're getting that maybe you need to move on i like that partnership yes that's what it's all about yes. so i want to thank you for joining us we're going to continue talking about property management and various aspects of that um, we're looking to talk about everything from insurance to uh, work orders and maintenance and things of that nature and we're going to continue talking about these things every first Thursday of the month for the next couple of months. So I hope you'll tune back in. Krista will be joining me, my fave, um, and uh, we'll kind of go, go from there. So please come back and join us. And until next time, aloha.